Our today's topic is escape velocity. We have already discussed gravitational field around the earth and we know that earth pulls and attract every object towards its center. And if we project up an object or a projectile and that object or projectile returns back on the ground, it is because of the action of gravity. Now, if we increase the initial velocity of that projectile, so it will take longer time to return back on the ground. If we continuously increase the initial velocity of that projectile, so at some instant that projectile will go out of the Earth's gravitational field. And that will never come back on the ground. The initial velocity which a projectile must have at the Earth's surface in order to go out of Earth's gravitational field is known as escape velocity. So escape velocity is that velocity given to a projectile so that that projectile go out of Earth's gravitational field and never come back. Escape velocity is apparently the velocity a projectile must have at the Earth's surface so as to be projected to an infinite distance in a space because at infinite distance that there will be no gravitational field on that object. If a projectile is given an initial kinetic energy equal to absolute potential energy G small m capital M sub e divided by R sub e it will reach an infinite distance from the earth. We have discussed this point in previous lecture that when we do work on an object to move it from our surface to our distance far away from our gravitational field. So that is known as absolute potential energy. Such a projectile will have escape velocity. So initial velocity provided to a projectile or an object to move it from our surface to a distance far away from our gravitational field in a space is equal to absolute potential energy. Here initial kinetic energy is equal to half m v escape square that is escape velocity square is equal to g small m capital M sub e divided by capital R sub e. We can cancel this m with this m and uh, we can shift 2 on right hand side of the equation and after taking square root we get we get escape velocity is equal to square root 2 g m e divided by r e. This is the formula of escape velocity for earth for different planets. We can change the mass and radius according to that planet. We know that force of gravity is equal to g m m e divided by r e square and here force is equal to weight of the object that is equal to mg m is cancelled with m and we get g m e is equal to g capital r sub e square we can put the value of g m e in this formula and we get escape velocity is equal to square root 2 g r e we can use this formula or either this formula to calculate the escape velocity by putting all the values we get escape velocity for earth is equal to 11.2 exponent 3 meter per second for any other planet we can change the mass and radius according to that planet and escape velocity will be different for any other planet work energy theorem in resistive medium there are two basic kinds of energies kinetic energy and potential energy and they can be converted from one form to another form and today we are going to discuss it we have this hammer and we raise it at certain height edge from the ground and due to this it is having gravitational potential energy because it is in the gravitational field of earth and this is having weight w is equal to mg when we release this hammer it will do some work on this nail to drive this nail into this wood block this hammer will fall under the action of gravity and it does work that is equals to work done is equals to w into h 
actually there is loss of potential energy of this hammer and gain in kinetic energy when this hammer reaches the ground before reaching the ground its potential energy is minimum and kinetic energy is maximum and we are assuming that it is frictionless energy transformation is friction frictionless so acquiring kinetic energy is equals to loss in potential energy so loss in potential energy is converted into gain in kinetic energy it means that this loss in potential energy is converted into gain in kinetic energy so loss in potential energy of this hammer from b to a is equals to gain in kinetic energy at a so work done is equals to w into h is equals to mg into h w is weight of the hammer that is equals to mg here we have ignored the friction but in reality there is friction and some work done is utilized against the friction so potential energy lost by the body in falling from b to a is equals to kinetic energy gained by it when it reaches a it is in the condition of frictionless conversion of mechanical energy if we include friction then potential energy is used in work done against friction and remaining potential energy is converted into kinetic energy so loss in potential energy is equals to gain in kinetic energy plus work done against friction as the friction forces reduce the mechanical energy they are called dissipative forces this is very important work energy equation similarly when the body moves up then loss in kinetic energy at a is equals to gain in potential energy plus work done against friction so when object moves up then there is loss in kinetic energy at a and gain in potential energy at b plus work done against the friction this leads us to the law of conservation of energy in terms of kinetic energy and potential energy so kinetic energy can be converted into potential energy and potential energy can be converted into kinetic energy and we cannot ignore friction frictional forces in reality so some work done is against the frictional forces but the total energy remains same conservation of energy we know that kinetic energy and potential energy are the different forms of energies of same basic quantity mechanical energy so mechanical energy is sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy as in our previous case we discussed that falling of a hammer and uh, in falling of a hammer potential energy is converted into kinetic energy so total energy of system remains constant that is kinetic energy plus potential energy is equals to constant potential energy can be converted into kinetic energy or kinetic energy can be converted into potential energy but the total energy remains constant so due to this we have a law of conservation of energy that says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed it can be transformed from one kind into other but the total amount of energy remains constant we deal with law of conservation of energy in our daily routine we see the energy transformation from one form to another form in our daily life some forms such as electrical and chemical energy are more easily transferred than others such as heat ultimately all energy transfers result in heating of the environment and energy is wasted as we have discussed in previous case that falling of the hammer on to nail to drive the nail into wood in that case some energy potential energy is converted into kinetic energy and some is converted into work done against the friction when that hammer hits the ground 
then some energy is converted into heat energy and some energy is converted into sound energy for example the potential energy of the falling object changes to kinetic energy but on striking the ground the kinetic energy changes into heat and sound so it means that few energy is lost if it seems in an energy transfer that some energy has disappeared the lost energy is often converted into heat so this appears to be the fate of all available energies and is one reason why new sources of useful energy have to be developed so we will discuss that new sources of useful energy in next lecture